And we're back on the show. We have Emmanuel Mugara, the team leader and founder of Kampala Smart School. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. So we've been talking about education in schools and kind of talking about our own experiences. Uh, but we were in school a long time ago, especially. <laughs> <laughs> so we just wanted you to kind of tell us what's going on right now in, um, in schools. What are the different approaches to um, education right now in schools? Okay, thank you. Um, uh, we have different kinds of schools, um, traditional and non-traditional schools. But when you talk about formal education, um, we are talking about um, a kind of education that is organized and structured um, in a, a, a good setting. For example, there's always um, teachers who are trained, a curriculum in place, and maybe a school. Um, but you realize that, um, for example, when a two-year or three-year child begins school, they are starting like their own pathway, uh, which is sometimes determined by their parents. So um, they may attend traditional schools or non-traditional schools. So what makes the difference is what actually happens in the schools. Um, for example, I'm going to give you some features which you can look out in um, a traditional school and then the features you can look out in a non-traditional school. Um, Traditional schools tend to emphasize master of content because they're looking at the core subjects like math, English, SST science. They are looking at the mostly grades. You have to perform well. Um, um, they tend to have teachers using uh, teacher aid uh, instruction, for, uh, like uh, teacher-centered sort of kind of instruction. Um, they, w they expect students to believe well, what they are taught and answer questions <laughs> <laughs> and answer questions you know, with fixed answers sometimes. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. They seen. tend to have large class sizes, like yeah. they, are, they tend to be big class sizes and same sitting format, you know, sitting, uh, same sitting arrangement. Yeah. If you, you um, because it's so true. It's true. Yeah. Oh. So if you went to a school you, you attended, if it was traditional, most likely you can even spot your seat. You can spot where you, you start, yeah. and maybe your child is actually sitting in the same seat <laughs> and learning the same thing. So, like, there is a little or no much change in the traditional schools, though they, they, the students tend to perform very well and they are a bit competitive. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the um, non-traditional um, uh, schools, most of them are kind of international schools, um, but also we have national schools which are offering non-traditional form of education. Uh, so for them, they really focus on child-centered approaches, student-centered approaches. Um, the, it's not about the teachers, it's about the student. So they put uh, the student at, at the center of learning. Um, they involve the parents. There, there is a lot of activities. There are, there are so many activities that involve parents. Um, they extend learning beyond the classrooms. It's not just within the classroom. Mm -hmm. Learning just goes beyond the classroom. Um, they assign projects. It's a really exp it's, it's, it's exp experiential to the, to the students. Um, and um, of course, it has advantages and, and also some disadvantages. Yeah. But you mentioned one of the pros for the traditional as the children pass. They yeah. do very well in school because of the competition angle. Um, are there any other pros uh, of the traditional setting and maybe any other pros and cons for the non traditional setting? Yes, um, in traditional students tend to be more disciplined. They tend to be more disciplined. There's that kind of discipline that is expected out of the students once they are in the school. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's the case if they get out of the school, but within the school, they tend to be much more disciplined, as in listening. They do a lot of listening. You can control 100 children. They all listen at you. <laughs> uh, they, they, like it's, yeah. it's really, uh, there's high discipline within the schools. And then um, I could say, the, the pathway is just straightforward. Like, you know, I'm going to go to secondary, from secondary to university, yeah. just yes. straightforward. It's really affordable. That's another, um, yes. it's affordable and it's available anywhere. Mm. You can be any part of the country, you can access a traditional, traditional school. school. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's wow. How about for the non-traditional? Um, non-traditional, uh, you'd have to know the, uh, the advantages. The yes, yes. yes. And the uh, yes. Um, because of their way of instruction, 
um, children learn, I, I would think children learn better because it's not about the content mastery only. Because they, so they acquire other skills that are so much yeah, useful to them. They acquire uh, variable, uh, we call them competencies and character qualities that can make them, can make them succeed like in the future. Yeah. So uh, they are, they are, those are some of the advantages also. They get um, international recognized qualifications because if you are doing like IGCSE, it's really recognized internationally. Um, maybe the disadvantages are it's not available anywhere, like uh, everywhere. You find them in the cities. Yeah. Uh, if you go up country, you may get stuck with your uh, pathway. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and um, maybe the other thing uh, uh, I love about that kind of non traditional is uh, you find that um, students start uh, what we call self-directed learning. Yeah. They, own, they own their own learning. Yeah. They plan the their own. Of learning. Yes. yes. Mm. So it's really very important that for them, they, they know that it's, it's their learning, mm. so it, it builds lifelong learning. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and a general interest in learning. In learning. Yeah. And what do you think is the most effective learning environment? Um, of course, um, there are things, for example, we are looking at, at a conducive environment which is safe to the children. Uh, that's the basic requirement. Uh, but there are other things which go beyond that because we are looking at what kind of methods or instructional um, instru approach, yeah, approach that, that do, does the school use. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at that. You are looking at how engaged is the student. Mm -hmm. You are looking at what kind of feedback does a student get because this is very important. Feedback gives a student a way forward for them to succeed in at school and out of school. Um, you are looking at uh, an environment that is going to listen to the student. Um, uh, I know the student also has a responsibility to listen to the teachers, but also the school has to listen to the student. The voices of students have, have to be heard. Um, you are looking at uh, how uh, engaged, how uh, how much opportunity does the parent have. To take part in the child's learning. Yeah. So that's very important. So you have to look at so many things uh, that make the learning more, like the, the environment more conducive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So would you say, given all that, that the current way of education, generally speaking, is preparing our children for the needs of the future? Yes, to an extent I would say that. Um, when you look at how we learn today and the kind of curriculums, uh, the new curriculum that is available and then the old whatever, they all emphasize 21st century skills. Mm. Okay. Um, all of them are emphasizing that. Uh, they look at critical thinking, collaboration, communication, problem okay. solving, all that. Mm. But there is a disconnect between maybe the, the, the content yes. okay. and, <laughs> and um, what is done. Because you find that those 21st century skills can actually be acquired through informal ways. Yes. They don't have to be through uh, oh, a classroom. Okay. Yeah. I can get them from maybe uh, going to the park, uh, at, okay. at church. There are so many things you can get from uh, outside the, the, the classroom, so maybe at home. Okay. So the whole education is um, it's a big, such a big thing. Like you cannot just get it from school. school. Yeah. So at school, normally uh, people get a lot of maybe like content. But these days there's a lot. Like you can learn a lot maybe on the internet. There's a lot of content on the in internet. Yeah. There is a lot of uh, very good teachers on the internet. So, uh, like schools have to go beyond just delivering content, and they go to um, uh, how can they uh, bring in the 21st century skills and then the character qualities. Yeah. If they do that right, then the, the education will prepare people for the, uh, like children for the future. Yeah. Yeah. So, one of the ways that schools um, track the learning of students, so they are kids that come to their schools is through a standardized test for exams. Do you think that that's an effective way to judge if a child has actually learned? Um, um, for mastery content, you can use a standardized test, though it's, it's like... Um, for mas what? Mastery. 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 The content. Crumbing. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Now you can use uh, standardized tests because uh, th those are called assessments of learning, what you have learned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they are not so effective because uh, you have already passed or failed yeah. by the time you do uh, you get the results. And yeah. So you have passed or failed. Yeah. So um, I feel like, um, and they cannot be used to, ever, uh, to assess um, uh, like the 21st century skills we've been talking about. They cannot yeah. be used because there's no way you can use a numeric figure to measure your, crea your creativity. Yeah. Or... Yes. Like you, <laughs> yeah, it's very hard to use a numeric figure. So, so that there is. Um, I feel like a, a standardized test is um, a 20th 
century model being used in the 21st century. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we, so there's that kind of struggle um, on what's the best way to assess. Mm -hmm. Yet these standardized tests, um, they determined the education tra trajectory of, yeah. of a student. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's the issue at hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but I think see, that's, the, that's the problem. We, I, we all acknowledge that it might not be effective but the struggle is what's the alternative, what's the alternative? and nobody seems to, to be coming have an to have an alternative. So if there's what no solution, yeah, what, you can scrap. Yeah, what I've always thought about is um, if the thing about standard testing is it's testing if all the, if all the animals in the kingdom can climb a tree. Mm, yeah. yeah? Mm. And, yes. and, and has <laughs> taught them, has been teaching them how to climb a tree, tree. Yeah. the yeah. entire season. Yes. Yeah. I'm thinking if, this, if, if, if we did it in such a way that, oh, you're, you're an elephant, okay, now you go and pull down uh, the tree. trees. Mm -hmm. What do you do? You're a monkey, climb that tree. Mm -hmm. You are what? You're a fish? Yeah. yeah. What do we want to teach at this point? Let us teach it to you as you pull down the tree, yeah. as you climb the tree, as you swim. Then we can use a standard way of testing. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. not a standard way of testing. No, 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 no. That's a, that's a, that's a, personalized, a, that's a personalized way of learning. Standard Listen, learning, that's a personal way of learning, learning. but the, your test, the test yes. can be standardized. Standard. Yeah. Because we're just finding out, in that process as you are swimming, yeah. mm -hmm. did you learn yes. X, Y, and Z? Yes. So for me, I feel that the standard way of testing is perfect mm -hmm. if only we change the way the learning, the learning was happening. Mm -hmm. Because you're right, there's no other way of testing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean, except it's the standard you've, way. you've given that example. I always like breaking down things to the basics because if I slither up a tree, if I climb up a tree, if I crawl up a tree, when we get to the top, the question will be, what are we seeing mm -hmm. from that exactly. view? Yeah. Exactly. So it gives us, yeah. Yeah, mm, that's, that's, that that's makes sense. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think like um, it's still like uh, people have to develop solutions for yes. how to assess, better solutions on how to assess, mm -hmm. and they have to be really tested um, yeah. for quite uh, a bit a of time. Of time. Of time. You know that you know that they are working. Yeah. Yeah. So um, for now, we are still looking for solutions. Yeah. Yeah. What, what inspired you to start the Kampala Smart School? Um, I was looking at um, uh, how education is accessed. Like, it never changes. Mm -hmm. So I was like, um, there's, there are so many ways you can do it, and uh, parents can access uh, education mm -hmm. in a flexible way. Um, that would be, make it easier for um, parents and students. So we started a personal school uh, where we started with a digital learning platform where they could we upload their content, lessons, everything, so mm. students could access the lessons at home. So it grew into providing homeschooling programs, um, developing pathways for students, like personalized pathways for students. So we also try to formalize homeschooling because you know homeschooling is not really formalized. Mm. So we try to provide a curriculum, we provide teachers, we train the parents on how to do it. We also engage um, international assessment bodies and they are able yes. to assess the students doing homeschooling. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Has, has your, sorry, to, uh, but has your method been um, certified? As a, as a formal learning, because I know I know I'm doing the cradle, and yeah. I still have to. Okay. I'm doing something also d different from what everybody else does. Yeah. But we actually have to go through a proper process of certification, and yeah. is your process working? Yeah. Now, who are the number of children who have gone through, yeah. and now can we say you know like how Montessori is? Mm. It's now an actual learning approach, yeah. and so what you've done is bring about another learning approach. Like yeah. how how far are you going with? Uh, Certification of the yeah. approach. Um, so far, we're using a model of private candidates. Um, mm. You register as a private candidate, and some of the candidates that have worked with, uh, have gone through our system, actually pass well. Oh, wow. So that's where we, we are so far. But it's going to take us more students to come through the system so that yeah. we get uh, like proper certification. See, different learning approach. So Still going through peers. Yes, because. <coughs> Yeah, most, mostly all the curriculums, especially like the Cambridge, the British-based um, curriculum, we look at uh, the Ugandan curriculum. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it depends on the demands of the parents. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. So Emmanuel, finally, um, I've always been a big advocate for the responsibility of parents in homes to facilitate education or learning. Yeah. Um, what, what, what would you say, uh, what would you advise for parents to do to ensure that education remains relevant for their children? Knowing what is happening in their schools, what can parents do with their children? And from what ages would you, yeah. Um, so uh, parents need to first of all understand the curriculum that their children are doing. 
and then they look at uh, they are able to see what can be done at home and because we say that informal education is even ma is very important yes. because it builds the skills that the students will need for the future mm. so they can engage um, the students and provide opportunities uh, where the students can participate and then develop those kind of skills they can provide maybe like um, books they can pro they can monitor like the 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 programs the home programs that the, the children are taking part in they can look at um, what else outside the home like the environment ca can be beneficial to the child's learning mm -hmm. um, who other important people can they bring in the homes to help mm. in, in building education of these children mm. yeah. Wow. Um, we need to get to a place where not only the government is concerned about what our children learn, because education and learning is a thing for us as parents to be concerned about. Uh, thank you so much, Emmanuel, for coming to today and sharing your views and sharing your school with us. I, there's so much we've learned, and we can't wait to see you guys next week as we continue our discussions on parenting and motherhood. Remember to let us know in the comments section what you feel is the best thing or the best approach uh, for your child's learning and why. Uh, looking forward to seeing you next time. With love from Bump Love.